What's up everyone, my name is Joe and welcome back to Film Focus. In this video, I'm going to do a camera overview slash review of the Olympus Pen EES-2. This is a 35mm half frame camera, so it shoots regular 35mm film, but instead of a traditional SLR or rangefinder, that would shoot an image that has a negative size of 36 millimeters by 24 millimeters. This actually composes the image vertically on the roll of film. So the short edge of the 24 millimeter side actually becomes the long edge. And then the short edge becomes only 18 millimeters wide. So because of this, you're actually getting twice as much um, or twice as many images per roll of film. So instead of 36, you can get 72 to 76 images per one roll of film, which is pretty cool. Um, I was a little skeptical at first when I started shooting with this camera. I didn't know how much detail I would really be able to capture in a half frame negative, but I was pleasantly surprised. This is a, a really cool camera. Um, it's a vintage camera, but it still takes great images and I have a feeling I'm gonna be using it a lot in the future. Before I get too carried away, let's talk about the camera, its ins and outs, how it actually works, and then I'll also show you guys some of my images that I've shot through this camera very recently. So let's start out with the lens. I think that's the most important part of the camera itself. Um, it's a 30 millimeter f2.8 lens, um, and you can actually control everything with this camera um, through the lens. So you set the ASA on this, you can see there's three different uh, rings here. So you set the ASA or your film speed with the outer ring. The middle black ring is the focusing ring. Um, this is a zone focusing camera. So um, the closest you can focus is roughly one to one and a half meters. And then the furthest away, which is um, signified by this mountain image, um, is five meters to infinity. And it's pretty true to the settings um, or to its specs. Uh, the images that you shoot close up with this camera tend to be a little softer than the landscapes that you would shoot um, with it set to the five uh, meter uh, to infinity focus setting. But overall, you get pretty sharp results um, throughout um, every focal length or what have you zone. And then you can set either to auto exposure or to a specific aperture you would like to shoot at with the aperture ring, which is closest to the camera body. I tend to just leave it on auto um, and let the camera do all the work. This is actually a light meter that surrounds the lens. So this glass will take a reading of the light and then based on the settings that you have set on the camera, it will tell the camera to shoot one of two different shutter speeds that you can use with this camera. 1 40th and 1 200th of a second. You have no choice in the matter. You can manipulate the settings to try and get it to shoot um, what you want, but I don't think about it when I'm shooting. I know that if I have a steady hand, the images are going to the images are going to turn out sharp. So um, as long as you're shooting with a steady hand, you sh shouldn't have an issue unless you're shooting a moving subject. But then, I mean, that's always a gamble. So. Um, on the top of the camera, we have your frame counter here, which counts up to 72. We have your shutter release where you would usually find it. This camera also has a hot shoe mount, which is pretty unique um, and um, unique to this model of the Pen EES series. And then we have your film winder um, on the back. This is what you would actually lift up to load film. And then when the film is done, you use this to wind it back up. Um, on the back of the camera, we have your viewfinder. This functions more like a rangefinder because it has an external viewfinder and it's pretty accurate. Um, I found there was only a few images that I've taken with this camera that didn't really align with what I was focusing on. Um, so it does a pretty good job. And then there's also the um, film advance winder uh, for when you expose a frame and you wind it forward. And then lastly, the bottom of the camera, we have your tripod mount. And then this little button on the bottom is what releases the film in the back of the camera so that you can wind it um, back into the canister when you're done. That's really it. On the side of the camera, that's how you, there's a little lever, you open the back. And then here you can see what I was talking about. Um, the image is actually a, a portrait or a vertical 
um, image going on to the film that is loaded normally in the back of the camera. So really, really cool camera, very simple, very bare bones, fully mechanical, um, but it still does a really great job in terms of capturing good images. This is a great camera to just take out with you on maybe like a family trip or to a picnic or just walking around the street because it takes all of the thought away from how you're shooting in terms of your settings and it allows you to just look around you and observe and act quickly if you do want to take a photograph of something. Um, another thing that's really cool about shooting half frame just in general is it naturally creates diptychs and triptychs um, and it allows you to um, very naturally create panoramas within the strip of film, which is super fun. So some of the images I'm gonna show you are just natural diptychs that happened through the camera how I was shooting, um, but then also just the single images that can stand alone um, as a single image are still strong. Um, and if you shoot with a steady hand, like I said, you're most likely gonna get sharp results. So. With all that said, let's take a look at some of the images I shot and then we'll wrap up the video. All right, I hope you guys like those images. I was really surprised when I got my film back and saw just how good of images this camera can create. Um, I was very happy with the results. And even though the scans are very small, they're still really good overall. Um, I didn't mention this earlier. I might have already put it um, kind of as like an overlay when uh, you guys were looking at the images. The two rolls that I shot through this camera were uh, expired roll of Tri-X 400 and then a fresh roll of HP 5 400. Um, and actually the first roll that I shot through this camera, I started about a year and a half ago and I kind of forgot that the film was in the camera. So when I picked it back up and I saw I was only halfway through it, I decided to shoot the rest of it. Unfortunately, only like half of that roll turned out most likely due to the shooting conditions that I was actually exposing the film in. Um, I don't think there was enough light in a lot of the places where I was shooting it. So I took that knowledge and with the HP5 roll that I shot just the other week, um, I was much more careful of where I was shooting and that entire roll turned out perfectly. So i um, really, really happy about this camera um, and excited to shoot more with it. If you are interested in shooting a half frame camera, the Olympus Pen uh, line is a phenomenal camera line um, and relatively easy to find. Um, this was actually a gift, so I did not buy this myself. Um, thank you, Brian and Kristen. Um, I, I believe they found this in a vintage, it was either an antique store or a vintage camera shop. I can't remember which one um, of the two, but they aren't terribly expensive and this one is in perfect working condition. So um, good luck if you are on the hunt for one of these. Uh, definitely um, try one out if you are interested. Um, and with all that said and done, I think we're just gonna wrap the video up there. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like this video, comment, subscribe to the channel. All of that really, really helps. 
Uh, I appreciate you stopping by and taking the time to watch the video. Thank you, thank you. And if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll get back to everyone that I can. Um, and other than that, happy shooting, cheers, and I will see you guys in the next video.